itu. Welcome to the Golden Gear Reviews, where I take the driver's seat in the bot cars and dive deep with 007. Let's start with my favorite part, the car. The second bolt car is a 1935 Bentley Mark IV drop head coupe. It has a 3.5 liter straight 6 engine producing 115 brake horsepower. This is quite the size for an engine, but this was normal at the time. At its release it was presented as a silent sports car with a top speed of 95 miles per hour. For a big behemoth like that, almost 100 years old, that's goodness gracious fast. In the movie it has a very special gadget in the dashboard, a car phone. This was still highly unusual in the 60s. I worked as a car agent for over 15 years, so how does this car measure up? I'm ranking the cars. The Bentley Mark IV Drop Head Coupe is quite an unusual pick for the Bond series as it was already 30 years old at its film's release. But it was probably a tribute to the cars that Bond drove in Ian Fleming's novels. Sadly, the Bentley only has a small role in the movie. Just as the Sunbeam Alpine from Dr. No, it does not reach Bond car status. However, it does have a curious gadget. A car phone. During a picnic, Bond gets paged by Q and then goes on to call Money Penny from his car phone. did not gain mainstream popularity until well into the 70s. Hmm. However, the directors were most likely inspired by a TV show detective that used a car phone in the early 60s. Interesting. This message will self-destruct in 5 seconds. Dude, what? Now back to the car. In the early 30s, Rolls-Royce acquired Bentley Motors and set out to transform several of their models to sports cars. The very first result? Bond's Bentley Mark IV. It was built as a rolling chassis at the Rolls-Royce factory in Derby, England, to be bodied by a coach builder of the customer's choice. Most of the 3.5 liters were made to look like the Rolls-Royce Phantom II, 4.3 liter, 30 horsepower, 6-cylinder engine with Stromberg downdraft carburetor can go from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 12.5 seconds. Exactly! To me, the Bentley is quite a classy and fast sports car. Even in the 60s, at 30 years old, it still would be a head-turner. I personally would uh, prefer to drive this car over the Sunbeam Alpine from Dr. No. Because if you have to pick a Bentley or a, a Talbo? Oh, come on, man. Now, so in my ranking of Bond cars, I am placing it here. that we're up to speed, let's dive deep and explore the gadgets, the fights, and the women. Of course. In From Russia With Love from 1964, Sean Connery continues his legacy as James Bond. He travels to Istanbul, Turkey to retrieve a Soviet encryption device that was stolen by Spectre. 
To do so, he willingly falls into an assassination plot involving a beautiful Russian spy and ends up double-crossed. So, what about the gadgets? Bond is known for his outrageous gadgets, so the ones in this movie may seem quite lame. But remember that this is the very first time they make an appearance. These gadgets echo other spy movies from the 60s and don't quite fully embody the Bond legacy. What is your favorite gadget? Leave your answer in the poll. Okay, back to the video. The most important accessory from this movie is the attaché case. It contains all the life-saving gadgets that Bond will need on his adventure. First of all, you got to know how to open this case. Cause if you happen to forget it on a sleepy morning, you quickly will be reminded by tear gas explosion. Well, if that doesn't explode, prematurely, oh, giggity, 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 giggity. then it can make all the difference. The case contains several rounds of ammunition, a flat throwing knife, and a folding sniper rifle. Yeah, you heard that right, Bond had to get his origami on to even use this rifle. <laughs> And in case of a financial emergency, the case also contains 50 gold sovereigns. The attaché case plays an important role in one of the most impressive moments in this movie. The train fight scene. Nowadays, we are spoiled when it comes to movie fight scenes. But at the same time, a lot of Hollywood fighting looks the same. Explain it to them, Jackie. Even the editing is a trick. When they do the punch things, uh, boom, cut. Then second shot, second shot. From here, boom, again, strong. The audience, the eyes contract cannot that fast to change. When you suddenly, boom, boom, you change the second film, the audience just, they're so quick. They cannot really see very clear what's going on yeah. like an american movie you can see a, there's a lot of movement Be, when the, the camera angle movement that means the actor they don't know how to fight the director but, used the angle then the 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 the, the, the audience just very dizzy yeah that's going something go on then suddenly boom finish ah oh. it's like jackie is saying some carefully choreographed Punches happening so quickly you can barely see it. Like Michael Bay does in his fight scenes. American movie, the sound again. effect, that's good. Then the audience, boom, 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 then finish the. Or it becomes so insanely unrealistic that it becomes funny. I mean, man, even one of the greatest movies ever, The Godfather, James Kahn's character, Sonny is beating up Carlo. But in From Russia With Love, you get treated by a very realistic train fight scene. Round one fight. It all starts when Bond finally realizes that he has been double-crossed by Spectre the entire time. Being a spy himself, he admires his adversary, admits his defeat, and asks him questions to make sense of it all. You've been playing us off against each other, haven't you? I get a kick out of watching the great James Bond find out what a bloody fool he's been making of himself. Go on, I'm fascinated. He only gets angry when the other guy crosses his bro code. Is there ever a time when it's okay to break the bro code? <laughs> and a hush <laughs> fell <laughs> over <laughs> Jerusalem. He got filmed while having sex with the lady spy and it's being used as blackmail. Here's a roll of film taken in the bridal suite at your hotel. 
It must be a pretty sick collection of minds to dream up a plan like that. It's preposterous. <laughs> it's outrageous, egregious, preposterous. <laughs> it's definitely preposterous. Which lunatic asylum did they get you out of? From here on, they both get pretty triggered. And the fight starts with an amazing bitch slap. Bond is startled as his adversary is trying to humiliate him further. You crawl over here and you kiss me. My shoe! He tries to talk his way out of it. After all, he rather keeps his hair and suit straight. He's buying time by pleading for a last cigarette and offering all his gold sovereigns. His adversary is blinded by dollar signs and let Bond get his second briefcase. We all know what's going to happen. After the tear gas explosion, a light blows and the scene turns bluish. A shattered window brings in, uh, brings in the rhythmic sound of the train track. And from here on, uh, it's a real gritty mess of kicking, rolling, ripping at clothing, punching and diving. They're not just throwing some Hollywood punches. They are really fully trying to eliminate each other. The train carriage is a very small space for all of this, which makes choreographing this fight much more difficult. But it also gives room for more creativity. For instance, the door from the carriage is used to smash, and the rail is used as a liftoff for a kick. I was very impressed how well it stood the test of time. It still holds up. Flawless victory. Is that a nickel? Although the overall pace in From Russia With Love is quite slow and there is little action, there is another intense fight scene, which brings me to the women. In general, women in Bond movies have a very typical role. This movie it's a very mixed bag, ranging from holy shit to are you freaking kidding me? But I think my mouth is too big. Let's start with the latter. Bond's partner in crime, who gets played out by all sides, is a Russian spy. But in this movie, she seems more like a compliant sex object than anything else at all. She gets ordered around by everyone and has no voice of her own take this i have the grilled soul and for madam i will obey your orders good anata sama no chin chin ni kenjo o itashimasu ore no chin chin nichikan mai ni suita bond is not impressed with her although enough to sleep with her on the other hand she is completely smitten with him and forsakes all of her goals just for his love. Is it here? What? The decoding machine, Electa. Must we talk about it now? I mean, compared to Honey Rider from Dr. No, she is a very boring and unlayered character. Luckily, there is one very strong and atypical lady in this movie. Clap. It is the villain, Rosa Chleb. It's Chleb, not Chleb. Her name was a pun on a popular Russian phrase for women's rights. Chleb i Roji. A direct translation for the internationally used labor union slogan, Bread and Roses. She definitely honors her powerful name with a very strong will and military character. She is the one who knows everything and pulls all the cords. She is a fearless lady and not to be messed with. If you do, you will be shot. In turn, she reports directly to Blofeld. Klepp was played by a famous German actress, Lotte Lenya, who was known for her bubbly and upbeat character. She found an interesting challenge in playing the evil and dominant Klepp. 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 Is a football player. Hleb, difficult angle, he's got it in! Alexander Hleb scores for Arsenal. Also brings her own uh, gadget to the fight with Bond. A poison infused blade in the tip of her shoe. 
Although she fails to kick Bond with it, it makes for a pretty gritty struggle. And her legacy has carried on. Gleb was... Dude, come on! <laughs> Leb was named top 10 Bond villain in 2008 by the Times. And she was also an inspiration for Austin Powers' Frau Farbissima. Begin, laser ignition! <laughs> Let's take a look at the final score. From Russia with Love is quite a slow-paced movie and contains several uh, strange side stories within it. But when there's action, it is exciting and well-directed. It introduces uh, us to the Bond pictures we know best, like gadgets, femme fatales, and suspenseful action. It also introduces recurring characters like Q and Blofeld. At the same time, there's also some of the Bond tropes. So I would call it Bond Begins Part 2. We get a taste of international landscapes and cultures in this Bond that was followed up in every movie after. Going on vacation abroad was not a common thing yet in the beginning of the 60s, so the movies put a special spotlight on destinations that would later become popular holiday spots, like Jamaica in Dr. No and Istanbul in From Russia with Love. Plot-wise, it deviates quite a bit from the original story by Ian Fleming. In the book, the Russians had a much bigger and evil part, but in the 60s, this was such a sensitive subject they decided to pin the whole thing on Spectre instead. Of course, Spectre. And it wasn't a Russian show at all. No shit, Sherlock. I have to make a special mention of character Kerim Bey, Bond's Turkish liaison. First of all, he sold me completely on being Turkish, but he turned out to be the Mexican actor Pedro Armendariz. During shooting, he was diagnosed with a terminal illness, but he wanted to finish his part in the movie at all costs. And so his filming schedule was moved up in the schedule. Sadly, it was his last act and he passed soon after. Last but not least, it introduces the famous Bond theme. And of course, the title song. Go over to my Spotify Golden Gear playlist to listen to my favorite picks. So, now for the final score. From Russia With Love is not a bad movie, but it wasn't as good as Dr. No. On a scale from rusty iron to platinum, I'm rating this silver. Of course. Have you seen this movie? Do you agree with my score? Please leave a comment, like and subscribe. Dr. Video's Golden Gear Reviews will return in... I will get you next time, Dr. Video. Next time. Tear gas explosion. F you heard? <laughs> you heard? <laughs>